So in the last video, we talked about selecting the perfect cart for you and all the things to consider when you're selecting a cart for your professional practice in your school. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the nitty gritty, how do you organize supplies on the cart? Um, so the first thing that I would recommend is really not about your cart. It's about how you stage supplies in preparation for the cart each day. So um, I have a photograph here that I will show you of a shelf that I have um, right inside the room where my art closet is located. Now, this shelf is not in the actual art closet because my art closet is a hot mess. It's, it's outside the door and more easily accessible. And um, what I've done is I have a box for each grade level that I um, have clearly labeled that I put on the shelf. And this is where I stage the materials that I'm gonna need each week. So when I'm preparing for the week, I go over the lesson plan that I'm going to be doing at each grade level, and then I put those materials in the box, like everything that I'm gonna need. Extra paper, if I'm gonna be using any books with kids, um, project samples, any supplies, anything I'm gonna need for the demo, anything. I also leave in a little bit of whatever was used the previous week. Um, so that way, if I'm on the cart and I encounter a kid who was absent, I still have the supplies from the previous lesson so that I can help them get caught up. And in some cases, if I'm anticipating a couple really fast workers and I might wanna have them start on something new, I might also put the supplies for the next portion of the project into the box. So why am I doing this out here? Well, I have found that if I try to jam everything on the cart, I inevitably forget something because you're talking about a small piece of real estate. And by spreading it all out and having it in boxes on this shelf, it helps me get more organized and ready. Now, I can't fit all of these boxes on my cart at once. So in between classes, I am lucky enough to have a couple minutes of a passing period I come down and grab one of these boxes, whatever, for the next grade level and swap it out. I understand that some art teachers don't have passing periods on carts, so if that's your situation, I would recommend strategically leaving these boxes in the morning outside of the classroom you're going to go in, so that way it's already ready for you and it's all set. A couple benefits that I've found to the staging system are inevitably, no matter how organized you are, you are gonna forget something. And you're going to be in a situation where you are standing in a room with a whole bunch of kids who are super excited for art and you are missing some critical supply that the lesson can't go forward without. What's really nice about this is if you've been keeping everything that is needed for the lesson on these shelves, you can send somebody and they can easily find what you're talking about because it's on the shelf and it's labeled, right? So like, let's say that we're doing a collage project and I forgot some really special paper that the kids needed. I could send a trustworthy student or I could poke my head in the hall and find a colleague and say, hey, can you run down to my staging shelf and grab this? they're no longer looking through the whole art closet for a random item. There is a specific location that they're looking for. And so if you have forgotten something, this really helps somebody who is trying to help you out. Another thing that's really been working for me is what I call a supply kit. So it's a similar idea to these grade level boxes, except that you're, you're creating a box that just houses everything you might need for a particular technique or project. So for example, in addition to some of these boxes, you might have like a weaving box where you would put everything in one box that you would standardly use for a weaving project. So for example, like cardboard looms, a bunch of yarn, a couple samples and some scissors. And so then it's a technique box. So instead of taking a whole grade level, um, you could just take that particular technique. One example of this, I just grabbed this one out of my room, but my fourth graders right now are working on radial symmetry and we're doing a color diffusing project with color diffusing paper. So I've got in the box, a whole bunch of old markers, junk markers for them to use. I have an extra pair of scissors in case kids don't have that. I have the color diffusing paper that we're using and a couple samples. And then also I've got the spray bottle that they're spraying down um, the paper with. So like I mentioned, everything for this one technique is in the box. So regardless of where they're at in the project, I have what they're going to need. A couple other supply strategies that you might think about um, are creating individual folders or portfolios for student work. And we'll talk a little bit more about that idea in another video. 
Um, clearly labeling your teacher items. So for example, on my cart, I have things like scissors, um, teacher scissors, stapler, tape, um, an overhead projector remote. I have labeled them all with my name and in some cases I'll put fun washi tape on it um, so that way it looks different from everybody else's. So if I leave it in a classroom, um, that teacher will recognize right away that it's not theirs and see my name and send a student to give it back to me. That way you don't <laughs> shed materials throughout the school and lose them. We talked a little bit about the topic or um, technique specific bin. Um, I also have um, buckets for carrying water and we'll get to that in a video about painting coming up. And then finally, um, some other supply tricks that I'm enjoying right now are styrofoam packing materials um, for sharps. So things like um, scissors or clay tools, you can stuff them into a chunk of styrofoam and then that way you have them on the cart and you can visually see really quickly if any are missing before you leave. Um, and then um, also the pegboard is another great way to um, store materials like we saw in the last video. Lastly, we have this other great resource that I think is a real time saver. It's a daily supply checklist. Know before you go. So the idea here is that you would write down each grade level and then think about the paper that you might need, the supplies, any materials for differentiation, and materials for students who may have been absent previously. This is great to just like run off and go over at the start of each week or day cycle of lessons so that you can just kind of think through everything that should be in those boxes or should be on your staging shelf. So it's just one more way to kind of check yourself and make sure that you're actually prepared for class.